Hello class, I'm Dr. Yang and welcome to CS370 Operating Systems. Alright, thread life cycle. You guys saw this before and uh, the last time when we talked about this uh, was when we first learned about a thread. And at the time, the only waiting and wake up mechanism was thread exit and thread join. But since then, we learned about how to block, okay? And one super obvious example is to uh, wait on a condition variable as shown here, and the waiting thread can be woken up by somebody else sending the signal to that waiting thread, and then the thread will be woken up and move back to this ready state. So uh, this is the so-called Mesa semantic. And the ready thread can make transition to running state when scheduler kicks in and actually picks you to execute on the CPU. And while the thread is running, scheduler can just interrupt in the middle. Uh, that's known as a preemptive scheduling. Scheduler can kick the thread out and that will make the thread transition to ready. And also thread yield introduces this scheduling opportunity and if this happens, and if there is another thread that's ready, then chances are schedule will pick another one. That's how you change your state from running back to ready. And while you're running, if you detect a certain condition where you cannot make any progress, then you can call some kind of blocking or waiting call, like a condition wait. Or you try to grab a mutex lock, and the lock was held by somebody else at the moment, then you should block. And that's the moment when you transition from running to waiting state. And this is a, a good opportunity to talk about how operating system or thread manager actually manages these ready and running and waiting threads. The way it works is operating system or a thread manager keeps a list of threads that's ready to execute. Uh, it's called ready list. And essentially, this is the list that strings all the ready threads together. Let's move this whole thing a little bit. And let's say this is uh, the TCB of thread 1 and thread 2 and thread 3. Okay, by the way, I'm going to use these blue boxes to represent a TCB like this okay and inside of this box i'm going to write the name of the thread and the threads are named like this uh, with a number and whenever the scheduler wants to switch to different thread the scheduler will take a look at this ready list and pop one out and schedule that thread on the cpu uh, let's say thread four is running Okay, so thread four is executing uh, right now. So you may think that there is a pointer that points to the PCB of currently executing thread. And uh, let's write this as current. All right, using this setup, uh, let's talk about how threads get blocked and how they move around that involves waiting state. So over here in the whiteboard area, I'm going to write a very prototypical use case of a condition variable over here. So uh, let's say uh, there's a function called foo and the implementation. So this is the one that waits. And over here, uh, you have another function called bar, very original. And obviously, this is the one that signals. All right, so uh, this example is prototypical. And by now, you guys should be very comfortable with this structure. Okay, so this is the critical section. And this is another critical section. Because the weight releases the lock internally. So this is a two disjoint critical sections. 
But uh, over here, the bar, this is a one single critical section here. Uh, let's say thread one and thread two is about to execute a foo, but obviously thread one and two are not executing right now. It's in the ready state. Oops, by the way, I made a mistake. The second one is uh, thread two. And over here, uh, let's say thread three was about to execute this bar, and thread four is executing on the CPU right now in our setup. Let's say thread four was executing inside this critical section, okay? So thread four already acquired this lock, called the signal, and let's say there was no waiter, so nothing happened, and it's about to release the lock. Okay, this is the initial setup. And so we have, in this example, two instances of synchronization primitive, the mutex lock and condition variable. Let's write here. So you have a lock, obviously type is mutex, and you have the instance of condition variable. The type is condition variable. And inside this mutex lock and condition variable, there is a list. Okay, let's say this is a list head, head of the list, and it's called wait list. And just like mutex lock, condition variable have this list of waiter. So in the beginning, wait list was empty. Wait list of the lock was empty. And also wait list of condition variable was empty like this. All right, so uh, right now the thread four is running and thread four executes a little bit more code here. And just before thread four releases this mutex lock, let's say that something happened, a hardware timer interrupt happened, and operating system got involved, and the scheduler of the operating system decided to schedule thread one here. So the thread four needs to be kicked out, and thread one should be scheduled. So basically, thread four gets kicked out and thread one gets scheduled in. And because this just got kicked out, let's just add thread four at the end like this. So, oh, by the way, the actual mechanical action of switching thread one with thread four needs to be elaborated. And that's known as context switch. And we are going to discuss it in detail in next video. But at this moment, let's just assume that you know we have the context switch in place and we just performed it. So now thread one is the currently running thread. And obviously the state member of this TCB of thread one needs to be updated okay, from ready to running. Likewise, state member of the TCB for thread four needs to be changed from running to ready. So now thread one is executing, starts executing here. So, and it entered foo. And the first thing it does is to acquire this mutex lock. And at this point, thread one examines the content of the mutex. So it is either busy or free. But because thread four got suspended while holding this mutex lock, the lock is currently held by thread four. So the lock is busy at this moment. So because of that, the thread one cannot acquire this mutex lock. So the thread one needs to be blocked. So thread one failed to acquire this lock here. So it needs to be blocked. And before calling scheduler and perform context switch, the thread one needs to put itself into the wait list of this mutex. So what should happen here is the TCB of thread one is inserted to the wait list of this mutex lock like this. And over here, you call the scheduler. And uh, for some reason, thread four got picked up. Okay. So now thread four 
gets to be executed again because the thread four is gone. Wait list should look like this. All right. So thread one got blocked at this point, suspended. And now thread four came back. And thread four finishes off the rest of the code and then it calls lock release. Thread four now looks at the wait list of this mutex and because there's a waiter, you unblock one of the waiting threads. And in this case, there's just only one waiter, thread one. And what should happen here is you pop this thread one out. Now the wait list is blank and you insert thread one to the ready list again. And let's just say uh, to make our lives easier, thread one got inserted at the start of the ready list like this. So thread four, after releasing this lock, let's say thread four just exited. So thread four called thread exit. You get rid of the thread four and the scheduler needs to pick another one to execute. In this case, let's say the scheduler picked thread one. Thread one, you just pop this thread one out. And now the thread one was blocked at this lock acquire. And upon resumption of execution, it checks the state of the lock again. And now, because thread four releases the lock, the lock is free now. And the thread one is able to acquire the lock and to enter this critical section. Thread one executes this code and thread one detected the condition in which the thread needs to block. So it calls condition wait function here. And obviously this suspends the thread one. Thread one needs to block and make transition to the waiting state. So the thing is, TCB of thread one here, this time moves to the wait list of this condition variable because we just called the wait function of the condition variable. The TCB of thread one gets inserted to the wait list of condition variable at this time. And thread one blocks at this moment because thread one gets blocked, thread one make a state transition from running to waiting. And scheduler picks thread two here. So thread two gets scheduled and thread two is now in the running state. And thread two begins to execute. Thread two enters foo and enters this critical section and can enter this critical section. Why? Because the lock became free when thread one went to wait. All right, so thread two entered this critical section and also encountered the condition where the thread needs to wait, just like thread one. So it calls condition wait and just like thread one, thread two before scheduled out the TCB gets inserted to the uh, wait list of the condition variable. And uh, thread two is blocked at this point. And over here, because thread two moved to the wait list of condition variable. And thread three is the only one that's ready to execute here. And the current thread becomes thread three. All right, so let's take a look at thread three. So thread three over here enters bar and grabs the mutex lock and it can enter because thread two released the lock before it went to wait. Entered this critical section and at this moment, thread three calls signal. And what is the behavior of signal? signal wakes up one thread, right? So the signal function 
takes a look at the wait list at the moment and there are two threads, thread one and thread two waiting and just pick one. Which one to pick? Implementation dependent, okay? But let's say I uh, just, in this case, we pick the first one. That means thread two gets picked. So the signal wakes up thread two. That means TCB of thread two moves from this wait list to the ready list. And thread one is still waiting, but if it were broadcast, not signal, then broadcast wakes up all thread, all the waiter. So that means if it were broadcast, then thread one as well gets woken up. So thread one should move as well. But in this case, we call the signal, so only one thread gets woken up. Thread two now became ready like this. This is the outcome of thread three calling signal. Then after this, thread three continues and thread three finishes. So this is the, the current state. Thread one is still waiting on this condition variable. And right now thread three is executing and thread two is in the ready list. And basically this is the picture. This is what you should have in your mind when you're talking about threads changing its state and waiting and signaling with each other. And how about and how about a semaphore? The same story. Semaphore works just like the same way. So let's say, and if there is a semaphore, and you know, just like lock and condition variable, semaphore has this wait list, list of waiter, and if somebody some thread was waiting on semaphore, for example, try to call P when the internal count value is zero, then that thread needs to be blocked and the TCB of that thread should be placed on the wait list of that semaphore object. Okay, so uh, this is the sort of uh, big picture, the dynamic picture of collection of threads changing states. By doing this exercise, I hope you have a pretty good mental picture of uh, the behavior of condition weight and condition signal and what it means by some thread being blocked or suspended, right? So, and there are two types of suspension. So uh, one is blocked on certain condition. So it's in waiting state. So it cannot be scheduled again because certain condition prevents you from making further progress. So the thread needs to be placed in waiting state. And another type of suspension is uh, there's nothing wrong with the current state of the thread. The thread was perfectly fine executing its own code, but scheduler somehow decided to suspend uh, the execution of the thread. And the thread is placed onto the ready list. And the state of the thread should be in ready state. All right, thread states. Uh, using the description of the textbook thread state, these are the states of the thread. This is the location of the TCB. Basically, it's moving around ready list, running list, or synchronization variables wait list. Location of register. So the meaning of this uh, location of register is that except for the case where the thread is actually occupying the CPU and actually executing, the thread is actually suspended, okay? And the, the state of the CPU you know, register needs to be preserved. It needs to be frozen and needs to be uh, saved to somewhere else. And obviously you have, as a part of the TCB, you have fields for saving those registers. So, so the frozen content of the register is located in the TCB for init state and ready state and also waiting state. And except for running state, the register context needs to be preserved and they are saved inside of this TCB. And finished state, you're done, so it's either TCB or deleted. So we really don't care, okay, because it's a finished. 